All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about four things you need to do to start making awesome pages in eDesign, four things you need to know about, I should say. So we are here on the main page that we are going to be editing on. And over here on the left-hand side, I want to talk about three different tools. The first one is the selection tool. You will use this one a lot. It's keyboard shortcut BTW is escape. So if I have a different tool selected and I press escape, you can see it switched back to the selection tool. That's a very good keyboard shortcut to know. And if you're ever not sure, you can just leave your cursor over it. You can see it says selection tool escape. The other one is the rectangle tool and its keyboard shortcut is R. And one thing you need to know about the rectangle tool is that you can click and hold on this and you can choose other shapes. But for now, we're just gonna deal with rectangles. And the third one I want you to know about for now is the zoom tool and its keyboard shortcut is Z. I don't really use the zoom tool very much. I actually prefer the keyboard shortcut control plus to zoom in, control minus to zoom out or control zero to take my page back to full screen. You can actually press it twice once gives you this more zoomed out view and then control zero again, zooms it in so that your page fills up the page. So control plus and control minus, I think are much easier ways to zoom in and zoom out. And then if you're way zoomed in and you wanna go back to the main view, press control zero twice, I feel is ideal. So how do we use these tools to actually start making a page? Well, let's start with the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut R. And before I draw a rectangle, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit because I wanna look at these boxes. And one thing you need to know is that when you draw a rectangle by clicking and dragging, eDesign kind of forces it. It will snap to the edges of those boxes. You can see, even if I wanted to, I can't let go of this in between those two little tiny boxes. I can on the green boxes, and that's okay. Uh, you don't always have to go edge to edge on the green boxes, although it's not a bad idea. So I'm going to just move this around and ultimately drop a box right there. And you can see that was filled by default with the color gray. But you can also see that I put it in the gutter, which I don't want to do because there might be a face right there. It's okay to put boxes across the gutter, but for now, we're not going to do that. So I'm going to switch to the selection tool. I could come and click right on this dude, or I could just press escape on my keyboard. And you can see I can now click and drag and move this box around. I need to zoom out, so I'm going to press control zero twice. That's going to allow me to see my whole page. And I want to come and put this right about there. Seems like a good spot. It doesn't really matter where you put it for now. You can see with the selection tool selected, I can make this box bigger. So I can move this around. I can make it taller and not as wide or shorter and super wide. You can make these boxes any shape you want. But remember, most photos are either about this shape or this, not that, that shape right there. Which means if you put a box on here that's that shape, there aren't very many photos that are going to fit in that box. So just keep that in mind. If I decide I don't like this box at all, I can always just click on it with the selection tool and just press delete on my keyboard. So let me create another box. And again, I'm going to do it there to there. About. I'm going to make this a nice big box because we're going to put a big photo here. And I'm going to zoom in by pressing control plus just to look at my box. And you can see I went over the edge of the green. Again, not that big of a deal, but for now, Let's have our boxes always go from green to green so they cover green completely. Now, what I'd like to do is add another box. So imagine we're building a page. This is going to be our biggest photo, what we would call our dominant photo. And now we're going to add secondary photos to this mod, what we would call it, which is anytime we're putting a group of photos, a group of photos together, we would call that a mod. So maybe we were doing a group of photos about Southridge sunrises. So this would be a mod on Southridge sunrises. So I'm going to add a second photo down below it. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut R, and I'm going to line this up right with the corner of this one right here and click and drag another box. And this box will always be smaller. Secondary photos are always smaller than dominant photos. The other thing I want to point out is how these two boxes line up. So see this line right here coming down? You'll notice I made sure those lined up exactly. One of the things you have to be really careful of is that you don't do this or this. And the reason why is because if they're close, it feels like they should be lined up, but they're not. So it feels like a mistake. So this is okay. And this is okay. They don't have to be lined up. You just have to make sure that if they're not lined up, that it's a big gap. The rule in yearbook class is that it's always at least one green box 
if it's not lined up. So right here, totally fine. Right here, totally fine. Right here, not fine. Right here, not fine. Because it's close enough that it looks like it should be lined up, but it's not. So we either want it to be lined up perfectly or we want it to be quite a bit different. So I'm going to put this one right here. And then I'm going to add another one. So I'll go to my rectangle tool. And let's say this is a vertical photo rather than a horizontal photo. So I'm going to put this one like this. And notice what I did. I knew that this photo was going to be taller than this one. So I made sure that my box came down at least one green box past it. I would not want to do that because, again, that looks like they were supposed to be lined up, but that I was being lazy and made a mistake. So anytime we have lines or corners or edges, we want to make sure that they're either perfectly straight and aligned like this or at least one green box in difference. Let's add one more over here, again, using the rectangle tool. And this time, I'm not going to line up that edge there. I'm going to go past it. I'm going to go way past it. In fact, I'm going to make this one huge. I'm even going to go through the gutter. Notice I lined up that bottom edge perfectly, but I made sure that this edge over here went way past this edge right here. So we have just created a mod, meaning a group of photos that are all going to tell a similar story. And now all we need to do is add some photos to this mod. So I'm going to zoom out by pressing Control-0, press it one more time to make it fill up my page. And I'm going to switch to my selection tool by pressing Escape. And let's start with the dominant photo. So I'm going to click on this box to activate it, to tell eDesign, I want to put a photo in this box right here. Then I'm going to come over here to the right side of my screen, and you can see I've got images, and I've got portraits, and then we're not going to worry about these other ones. Uh, portraits are when we do our school portraits, so you will never use portraits because I do all that for you. So really, images is the main one you're going to use. So I'm going to click on this. You can see right now there are only six images in eDesign that I have made available to you. And we're going to choose from these six what we want to make our mod over here. So I'm going to start by picking the dominant photo. You'll notice this box is a horizontal box, which means I want to make sure I pick a horizontal photo, which means any of these five would work. This one might work, but it's more of a square. So it might fit. It might not. I could try it and see. Let's say I want to do this one. Well, real simple. All I have to do is click on this and drag it out and drop it right over the top of that box. You can see that box, a purple or a blue line appeared around it telling me that that was the active box. So if I let go, that photo now drops into that box. Well, it doesn't fit just right. That's okay. I'm actually going to now double click on it. And you can now see, I can see these blue circles right here. And these blue circles allow me to resize and move the photo. So maybe I want to zoom in. So I'm just going to click and drag this out. And now I can click here and drag and move that photo around. But maybe I just want to focus on his face and his racket. And I'm not so worried about his feet. So there you go. I made it fit. And I like the looks of that. Now let's add a photo to this box right here. So I'm going to come over here. Notice this is also a horizontal box. So I'm going to choose a horizontal photo. Maybe I want to make sure I get a girl tennis player in this one. So I'm going to choose this photo, drag it out here, and drop it right there. Double click on it to change it up. Zoom in a little bit because it's too far away. Move it around. Yep. One thing you want to be really careful of as I double click is that you don't end up doing this right there. Meaning I've actually left part of the box exposed. We want to make sure we don't do that. So I'll just make sure I move this back over. You always want to make sure your photo fills up your whole box. So let's add a couple more photos. Here's my only real vertical photo. This is really my only real vertical photo over here. Now, you don't always have to use a vertical photo in a vertical box. Sometimes a horizontal photo can fit in a vertical box. For example, here's an example that fits pretty well. The only problem is sometimes you lose an important part of the photo. So you have to decide, can I make this work or can I not? So I put this in here. Let's say I don't want it. I want to replace it with a different one. What I'm going to do is double click on it and press the delete key on my keyboard. Now, you can see that box is still there. It's gone transparent. It's see-through, but it's still there. So all I have to do is to make sure to see it. Just come and click right there. I'm like, okay, there it is. And if I wanted to fill it with a color again, I could by coming down here to the bottom and clicking on this bottom 
paint bucket right here and choosing a color. And that fills it with black, which is fine. The color doesn't really matter because once I put a photo in there, it covers up the color. So I'm gonna put one last photo in here. Let's do this one. And just like that, we have added four photos to our mod. Now, what's the problem here? Does anybody see it? It's a huge glaring issue and one we have to fix. You're right, his face is right in the gutter. How do we solve that problem? Well, we could do a couple things. We could try moving this photo over. I can only move it to there and that kind of solves the problem. But what I'd rather do is maybe put this photo somewhere else and put a different photo here where I don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna delete this photo from here and maybe instead I'll use this photo here because his face is on the left-hand side. So you can see this one goes through the gutter. Not a problem, the ball's not in the gutter, his face is not in the gutter. And now it turns out I'm just not even gonna use that photo because I'm just gonna use these four. One nice thing that InDesign or eDesign does is over here on the left hand, right hand side, you can see which photos have been used and which ones have not. So I know these four have been used and these ones haven't. This is really convenient. If I'm making a whole tennis page and I've got 30 photos in this folder, now I can tell, all right, which ones do I have on the page and which ones do I not? So there you go. We have just used the selection tool, the rectangle tool, and the zoom tool to add four photos to our page. You need to now do this to your page, making sure you follow all the rules of spacing and lining up your photo. One important rule that I forgot to address is how far apart photos should be. I didn't talk about it, but you'll notice that I made sure that all of my photos, whoops, don't do that. that all of my photos are the exact same distance apart, which by the way, these little boxes are called pikas. And there is one half of a pica because these uh, boxes are split up into half pikas. So two of these makes one full pica. One half of a pica between each photo. This is super important. You cannot have a page that looks like this or I will be very upset if I see that. So do not under any circumstances do that. You wanna make sure your photos are always exactly one pica, sorry, one half pica apart when you're making your page. It is okay every once in a while to kind of have an outlier where you say, you know what, this photo fits with this mod, but it's a little bit different. It tells a very different story. I might put that out right here. And that is okay, but should be done with exceptions. And we'll talk more about that later. For now, everything should always be a half pica apart, just like that. So don't do this, don't do this. You want your spacing to be consistent all the way through the entire page. So for now, I want you to build four boxes and populate those four boxes with photos. And then once you've done that, let's move on to the next video.